Romney, when your backs are against the wall, you do <laughs> extreme stuff. Second half. Look at that. Dominic Wilkins, jump shot. Wilkins is floored by Bill Lambeer. Rick Mahorn, look at this. Rick Mahorn tries to play Peacemaker. That's when it came crashing down. Mahorn, everybody going at it. This got ridiculous, folks. Game five of the playoffs, they let you go at it. Watch Isaiah Thomas just knock down. Again, Isaiah driving. He's tossed by Antoine Carr. Thomas Hitman Hearns wants to go out and help his Detroit friends. He could use some of right there. There's the Hitman. Here comes Dennis Rodman in the lane. That was a big bucket. And the final score once again, 104 to 96. Detroit wins and clinches and advances, beating the Hawks. Hockey tonight. Okay, game still going on in Edmonton. If the Oilers win this game, they advance to the Stanley Cup Finals, okay? So far, Detroit leads it 2-1. Second, first period, 1-1, Red Wings, Steve Eiserman stops the puck. Slap shot is deflected, and the Red Wings take the lead. And here's an update. Here's your scoreboard. It is 3-1 Detroit over Edmonton. The Oilers lead the series three games to one. So very important for Detroit to stay alive, and it is 3-1. That is now in the second period. All right, the main locker room itself. All the lockers for the guys who are very familiar to you. For instance, Kelvin Bryant, number 24. This is his locker most of the year. But for this week, minicamp week, it belongs to Danny Burmeister. That's right. Free agent safety out of North Carolina. One of the guys that would like to have a permanent locker at Redskin Park. But he's taken over Kelvin's locker this week. He's one of approximately 60 free agents and rookies who are trying, kind of dreaming, to be a member of this team. And Assistant Coach Dan Henning. Hey, Joe. How, how are you? you? Good to see you. Good to see you. With 60 guys, what are the chances? I mean, how many are really going to be uh, suited up in the fall? It's a numbers game, I know. Well, we have we have 100 coming in tomorrow, counting veterans and rookies, and mm -hmm. eventually it's got to be 45, so more than half. Yeah, a lot of these guys are going to, they'll be talking about this week for years and years to come because this could be their last week with the Redskins. Well, in the, in the past, some have come in and uh, actually gotten autographs, knowing it's is they that right? Going, yeah. Let's take a seat. We're at uh, Brian Davis's locker. Now, he's the number one pick. I'll tell you what we can do. We'll show some video of, say, the top five picks, and you can give us a mid-week report card on each. Okay? okay. We'll start with Davis, uh, number one pick out of Nebraska. Well, the first day he came out, he got beat a couple of times, but he really showed some competitive spirit the second day, and he, he's looked pretty good. Wally Klein out of Notre Dame. New position for him. Big guy. He's a projection to a different position, but he has all the tools. Size, speed, uh, he's got a little defensive temperament. Timmy Smith, running back, inactive for a couple of years. He's, he's a guy that was an excellent back as a sophomore, had a couple of injuries, and uh, we look for him to be a good back. Steve Gage, safety? Steve Gage is a projection from quarterback, excellent athlete. Hmm. Uh, Richie worked him out out at Tulsa, and uh, we think he's got the brains to go back there and uh, call those defenses eventually. Ed Simmons. Ed Simmons is a guy that Joe Bugle says can dance on a light bulb. <laughs> he says he's got good feet. Now, about Brian Davis, uh, you say he was beat early in camp. You know, Richie Pettibone said he tires too easily. Is this a conditioning problem? I think there's a, there's a combination of things here. Uh, first of all, they've been inactive since the end of the college season, yeah. which is a great deal longer than the veterans have been inactive since the end of the pro season. And there's an anxiety level coming into a training camp, and I think that eats up their energy a little bit out there. Well, you know what he says, Brian, he says that the camp, the, the level of, of play here has been so high, that's affected him. Here's his comments. You know, this is just a different level of receiver. They're a lot faster, they run better routes, they know how to get you turned around, and then there's the quarterback who, who gets the ball there a lot quicker. You know, you just don't have reaction time, the, the ball gets there. I wouldn't say I'm in bad shape, but in seeing what, what all we're doing out here, I could have been in better shape. What did you say about Brian? I said, I hope that our receivers run better routes than he saw at Nebraska. <laughs> or you're in trouble. <laughs> and then Wally says he's a little bit out of condition. Well, he, he's, uh, again, I think it's the off season being, uh, being uh, from December through, mm -hmm. we're in the middle of May now. That's a long time for him not to be working. Let's walk a little bit here. And let me ask you, who is the most impressive? If you had to come up with one player so far, who has impressed you? Well, I, Jerry Rome was talking about how well this uh, Ed Rupert from Louisville, a free agent quarterback, has picked up what we're doing. And uh, the, a couple of days in 7-on-7, uh, seven seven, he was really hot. Well, he uh, hit 6 of 8 one day and then 8 of 8 another. That's all you need are more quarterbacks. <laughs> Chicago Bears of the East. Well, you always need to have one training. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, there are a couple of players, quite a few players, that went through this last year. 
so they have kind of an advantage. Steve Buckhans has that story. Even though they were stars in college, the majority of these rookies and free agents out here will find themselves doing something other this fall than playing pro football for the Washington Redskins. But for the few veterans here today who have already tasted NFL experience, now comes the time for them to prove themselves all over again. Guys like Derek Holloway and Clarence Verdan, both USFL refugees that came to the Skins last season as highly touted free agents. Nobody, you know, have a guaranteed contract out here, and I haven't proven anything yet, so I'm just like a rookie, and I have to catch the ball, run the right routes, you know, run the right, execute well, you know, for the coaches, you know, to have any mind where I can play. At least we don't have our names on the, taped on the front of our helmets. Uh, they know who we are. Meantime, Terry Orr and Rick Badonik are well-known to the Skins coaches as well, and minicamp is just another chance to solidify a spot on the final roster. You're in the limelight for a long time, but then you come right back down to the bottom, and that's, that's exactly what's happening now. I have to reestablish myself and hopefully I'll score four or five times a game now and, and get myself back up there again. I have to come out here and uh, show something again here in camp to uh, get one of those spots on the 45-man roster. Yep, it's your annual mini camp. Everybody clamors to interview the number one pick, 50 rookies and free agents, 10 veterans, and other than that, nothing out of the ordinary happens here. From a divine, divine Redskin, Redskin Park, Park. Steve, Steve Buckhans, Buckhans, Channel 5, 5 Sports. Sports. All right, there's more to it than just a locker room. Coach, why don't we head down the steps here? I notice you've got quite a facility. A little basketball? Well, you, some of those shots you were showing on TV, a couple of the players were trying to make here today. What can you do? No, what can you what do? Can you do? <laughs> what can you do? I can, uh, I can all switch them. Right, all right, not bad, You've not got bad. a racquetball court, too. What is this, a country club? Uh, do the players and coaches use it? Well, uh, the coaches use it quite a bit in the off-season. This is a place where they can do some extra things okay. and uh, enjoy a little activity after they've worked out in here with Dan. Let's do this. This could be the most important room. Tell us about the weight room. Well, this is uh, Dan Riley's domain in here, and, and when he came, they adjusted the building here because this is, this is kind of the way it's been going. It's a 12-month-a-year it's a business now for these athletes to stay in condition. That's why uh, guys like uh, Davis and Klein are going to spend some time next week. And in the ensuing time with Dan Riley in here, we have the, the treadmills for yeah. running when it's bad weather outside, and he's got every form and fashion of machine here to work just about every muscle group in the body. Let's show a little Orioles video tonight because the Orioles are trying to break out of it. Eddie Murray uh, and the Orioles early in the game looked good. Eddie with the home run, first inning, made it a 2 nothing game. Ninth home run of the year for Eddie. Second inning, the birds were cruising. Ray Knight on first. Larry Sheets, two-run home run. Third in five days. In the eighth, it was 4-3 birds, but Jack O'Connor just called up. Gives this a three-run home run up. The Royals led 5-4. Then in the 10th, it was 5-5, and George Brett, George Brett gets the big double, and the Royals right now lead it 6-5. It is in the 10th inning. The Orioles record 15 and 17 going into play. Oakland, 8-2, final over Milwaukee, 7-4. Texas in the 9th leads the Yankees, 4-4. Boston and Seattle in the 9th. California, 4-4, make up 10-4 Detroit in the 9th. There you see the Cleveland-Chicago score, Toronto, and quickly to the National League scores. And there they are. And Coach Henning, thank you very much for giving us a grand tour of Redskin Park. It was a whirlwind tour. Well, there's other things you could have seen. Well, it wasn't too bad. Can I ask you this, Stumper? Bobby Rahal, back-to-back -back Indies, if he wins on the 24th. Who was the last to win back-to-back -back Indies? Well, I told you my answer was A.J. Fort, but you said that was wrong. <laughs> Morris and James? How about James? Uh, one of the youngsters? Rutherford. I'm going with Rutherford. No. Uh, Unser? Unser, which one? Uh, Al. Al. Bobby. Al. In unison. I heard stereo owls here. <laughs> oh, good. good. You All got right. it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job out there. A New York way to clean up after Fido. Next.